Circuit, Saturday at 4 p.m. live from Stanford Stadium, only on ESPN. Tonight, number 10, North Carolina, 2-0 in the ACC. Meets Georgia Tech, also 2-0. And Saturday night, Carolina let us know with a bang that conference play has arrived. Tough shot, spins out on him. Fight, Calabria throws it up from the ground. Oh, the buzzer! a late season feel this early in the ACC season as the top two teams in the conference square off tonight at the Omni in Atlanta. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler with Clark Kellogg. A week ago, partner, we sat here and said, what's wrong with Georgia Tech? They'd lost six of seven. Now they've won two straight. Carolina, nothing wrong with them. And nothing wrong with two of the best freshmen in the country that we'll see tonight. These two guys, Stephon Marbury and Antoine Jameson, have simply been fabulous freshmen all season long, in particular the last two games. Marbury, 17 of 33, 50 points. But Jameson, that is 81% shooting, folks. And he's posted back-to-back -back career highs in those last two games. I've been around ACC basketball 15 years. North Carolina always sits there about 50% from the floor. It's no different this year. It certainly is. And another testimony to the system that Dean Smith runs here. Part of the reason they get these good shots is because they're always interested in not allowing good to disrupt best. Since Carter has the shot there at the three-point line, no go. Dante Calabria says, nope, I don't want that open 14-footer. What we want is a punch from Antoine Jameson. North Carolina ranked 10th in the country. Dean Smith's got him playing great basketball again. We get set for the Yellow Jackets and the Tar Heels from Atlanta. Coming up next. Start an adventure. Nightline's personals will take you there. Hello. I'm glad I caught you. You have definitely caught me. How's 523 Beach Drive? 20 minutes. You got 10. I'm on my way. Listen to ads or leave your own. Retrieve messages from your voice box or forward them to your home. Dive into Nightline 24 hours a day. using the words Mercedes-Benz and bargain in the same sentence. Atlanta classic cars, like no other car, like no other dealership. One team pushed to overtime. Terrell Myers, three free throws with .9 seconds to go to send it to OT. Now it's a four-point UMass lead. Another unbeaten team, Clemson, leading by four, four minutes to play. We'll track both those stories, but now to the tip-off in Atlanta. Brad? All right, Chris, at the Omni, it has that feel. ACC basketball with the top two teams at 2-0, set to square off as we take a look at North Carolina's starting lineup. McGinnis, Carter, Jamison, Zwicker, and Dante Calabria, again, one of the top three-point shooters in the country. The last time out in that overtime win against Maryland, they overcame 23 turnovers by way of excellent shooting, and McInnes returned after sitting out a game and posted nine assists. For Georgia Tech and Bobby Kremens, Marbury and Berry in the backcourt, Harpering and Maddox up front, and Eddie Alisma, who is playing so well now, down low for them. Good shooting is an excellent elixir. Georgia Tech gave up 20 offensive rebounds to Duke, and yet you see perfect shooting from Elisma and Harpering led to them shooting 60% from the floor. Boy, take a look at, we talked about it last week, how Georgia Tech had been throwing the ball all over the place. In the last two games, they've cut those turnovers per game down about six per game, and that makes a huge difference. Jamison, the freshman who's played brilliantly, Calabria off the break in Carolina in a matter of moments, leads to another. Drew Berry, whose game has come around in the last week. The senior leader for Georgia Tech, Marbury. Three rattle right out, Harpering trying to keep it alive. But it's cleared out by Vince Carter. Both of these teams starting man to man. You won't see much else from Carolina, although Georgia Tech may show you some zone tonight. Jeff McKinnis nails a three. And Carolina jumps to a 5-0 advantage. Michael Maddox 
back and in. Off the glass. Good move. He's been a little bit quiet lately, and Tech needs him inside tonight if they're to have a chance against number 10, North Carolina. 5 of 14 in the first two conference games. He's better than that. Bobby Crimmins keeps reminding him of that, too. Jameson inside. Maddox contested it, and Harpering will clear off the miss. Here comes Marbury on the run. I thought he was going to backpedal and fire a three, but he didn't. You'll see it before the night's over, though. <laughs> That's for sure. Maddox triple team. Harpering gave up a three. And now he's fouled. They're going to catch McInnes, his first person. Against North Carolina, you have to be ready to take the good shots that are available. This North Carolina team will not steal the ball. None of Dean, Dean Smith's teams are noted for stealing the ball, but what they do is play good, solid position D. Always in the right place, and usually there's two of them. <laughs> Marbury works on Calabria. North Carolina in his own defense here, out of the baseline, out of bounds situation. Pack it into a listener. Over's wicket. They got a good look. Finish will clear it off. Carter working hard against Harper. But outside, McGinnis again. This time, they rattled out on him. Somebody may have gotten shaken up or maybe a shoestring loose. Drew Barry kind of looked like he hobbled down court. I don't know if it was him or not. He's retying. That ankle's been a problem for a couple of years. Right. In fact, if you can believe it or not, and I don't want to jinx Drew, his dad, Rick, just walked by us a couple of minutes ago before the game tipped off. He has been injured the last two years against North Carolina. Both times on February 12th. So it's a little earlier in the season. Maybe that'll be a good omen. Inside to Maddox. The hook this time. Boy, that would be a welcome sight to see Maddox get off inside and give Carolina a low post presence in addition to Elisma. Zwicker got behind Elisma. And an easy one for Surge inside. Seven four Carolina. Carolina showing zone. And again with the short bench, Dean Smith only plays about seven people. Stephon Marbury got his best look of the night, but that was a brick from three point line. The zone defense a way to be aggressive and yet protect your players from fouls as well. Again, it's a nice crossover dribble to get that shot away, and Zwicker's there all alone for the stick back and a five point Carolina advantage again. top of the key. They'll leave Alisma alone out there. Eight on the shot clock. Barry, three-pointer. Short. Georgia Tech not off to the kind of start they had against Maryland a week ago in this game. Back it in is Wicker. Surge with a hook. And the rebound comes off to Barry on the backside. Marbury got it. Money. When he gets that kind of time, he's as good as there is at going straight up and straight down the same way every time on his jump shot. He's really one that young players can watch in terms of repeating the same motion and explosion in his jump shot. Carter, not a good shot. Marbury will bring it. And the foul. Offensive foul against Georgia Tech. And that'll give it back to Carolina with a 9-6 lead, but it also brings us to our first timeout with 15-37 remaining first half. 9-6 Tar Heel. Hey there! Hey, ho, 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 ho. What's up? Oh, thanks for stopping, Bob. I I've been waiting out here forever. You just passed me. I'm out of gas. Your car is still running. Weird, huh? Very. It's 
Captain Flames! I don't think so. But I love you, man. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. You're not getting the Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. Where's the love, man? When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products. Like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. We're going to kill him. Yeah! Let me at him. One bite of Domino's Deep Dish. I love And you're talking deep. Sinking my teeth in him. Mile high crust cheese baked to the edge. Call for a large one topping just $9.99. Another forfeit. Oh. 9-6 North Carolina early in this one. Stephon Marbury off to a pretty good start for Georgia Tech. Boy, take a look at how he goes straight up and straight down. Great elevation. Good movement without the orange first. Keeping active. Just comes behind Barry. Look at that elevation. Picture perfect for him. And he said, as I talked to him before the game, 25 points a game. And that's the last four outings. 64% three-point shooting. But I talked to him before the game, Brad, and he said all those hours shooting the basketball at night uh -huh. in the dark have allowed him to perfect his shooting stroke. And then he's got older brothers who know a little bit about yes, the game. Yes, they do. And they, too, have helped him in his development. Eric and Don Jr. and Norman and North Carolina with a three. Okulaju just checked in for Carolina. The only change in their lineup. Barry way outside. Calabria will pull it off the backside. That shot will be there against that 2-3 zone after you've swung the ball from side to side. Dante doesn't miss too many outside the arc. That one off the mark, and Carolina will keep it. Last touch by Tech. Georgia Tech really having a problem inside with Zwicker. He's just so much bigger than anybody Tech has. He's keeping balls alive, and he's shooting right over <laughs> Eddie Alisman. This time he backs outside and buries the jumper. Zwicker, six for Carolina early. My father always told me good big will beat good little <laughs> all day long, 24-7. That added, that added height advantage of Zwicker paying dividends here in the early going. He's got two putbacks and a little eight-foot jump. 7-2 is indeed big. That's long, Brad. Harper is all alone. Georgia Tech can't find it outside the three-point line. Harper will try in close and had it blocked. Georgia Tech 0 for 5 from outside the three-point line. McKenna maybe rushed one a little bit there. That's an example of not taking the best shot available. Great feed, Marbury to Harper. That ball had eyes. Excellent use of the bounce pass in transition. That's the only way that pass gets there. Jamison, nice drive. Alisma rejects it. Georgia Tech comes up with a little defense of its own. Head up, eyes ahead, looking for somebody behind the defense. Marbury finds Harpering. Fast break 101, folks. Cuts it back to a six-point Carolina advantage. With 13, 35 to go first half. From Atlanta, the Omni. This has been Georgia Tech's home along with the Georgia Dome so far this year. Marbury got a good look again. It's just not dropping. At some point, they probably will if Carolina continues to give them that kind of room outside the arc. Zwicker. Boy, he's done a little bit of everything. Yeah, they can't bother him. See, that's a wonderful feeling to have as a post-up guy. When you can feel your defender and know he can't bother your shot. I had that feeling a lot, Brad. <laughs> Back 
it into Alisma, right back to Barry. Drew way off the mark on that three point. See what's happening here, Brad. In the first two games in the ACC, Georgia Tech has shot 55% from the floor and they've shot it extremely well from behind the arc. Those shots aren't falling, so now their weakness shows. They really don't have an inside game. Carolina going to sit in the zone and force them to make some outside shots. So Georgia Tech going to have to get high quality shots and knock a few down or defend, rebound, and try to get some before the defense is set up. Double team on Calabria. Dante gets it out to Geth, who just checked in. Ten on the shot clock. They cross court it. Open three. Doesn't go, but Carter got his own rebound and then stripped away by Barry. Tech runs. And Barry will pull it back out. And then go baseline to Marbury. Good luck to Maddox, but stripped away inside. Now Alisma is fouled. Well, that's good ball movement by Georgia Tech, even though they didn't get the basket. Yeah, you can live with all of that as you see Bobby Crimmins applauding the interior passing. Good decision here by Barry to pull it out and see what he's got. Marbury knows help is coming and finds Maddox. And then because of all that action, the defense is scrambling. Alisma able to get to the offensive glass. Maddox will take a seat. And he... Eddie Alisma will step up for Georgia Tech. He has uh, the last five games really started to put his game together and raise those averages to eight points and seven rebounds, as you see. But he's never going to be known as one of the all-time great free throw shooters in the country. That is a mild understatement, Barton. 42% coming in, and it just got a little bit worse. Got the second. 16 to 9, North Carolina. Tar Heels swept the Yellow Jackets in their battles last year. The backdoor look, Calabria got three. Had to adjust his shot a little bit thanks to Saunders. Now Marbury the other way. Harper's wide open. Yeah, he's falling away before he releases that. He's not staying with the shot quite long enough. Georgia Tech now 0 for 8. Outside the line. Anderson works inside. Strong move. So quick off his feet, Brad. I mean, Alisma's in good position there, but he's so quick, he's like a pogo stick in there. 13 of his 17 rebounds so far in the ACC on the offensive glass. Advantage nine for North Carolina. Barry, next going to keep trying. Jamon Williams, who just came in, hit one of his own. Stephon Marbury, good position for the rebound. To Harpering, Williams. Well, we're going to say Harpering last touch. Crowd not too appreciative of that call, nor is Bobby Cremens. His team trails by nine with 11.06 to play first half. Introducing the $16,000 BMW. Presenting the $16,000 Lexus. Behold, the $16,000 Mercedes. To everyone who thought it was impossible to build an affordably priced luxury car, we have just one thing to say. Take a seat. The Nissan Altima. Now own an Altima for zero down, zero APR financing and no payments until April. It's color printing and it's state of the art. It's flyers. It's proposals. It's Crayola and Hallmark Connection software. And putting your very own logo on a t-shirt. So it's not business as usual. It's what you can do with a new Canon Color Bubble Jet Printer. Canon. What can you do? If your battery is more than three years old, you can wait till it dies. Pay for a tow and some new battery you never heard of. Or you can get to Sears now and get the Die Hard battery. America's most trusted for over 25 years, starting as low as $59.99. So before yours dies, get dependability. Get the Die Hard at Sears Auto Center. 
Last season, UMass survived two overtime games on the road in the conference. They do it again tonight to go to 13-0 to start the season. The school record, Pittsburgh continues to clobber Georgetown. They trailed in the first half, went on a huge run. We'll keep you posted. Back down to Atlanta. All right, Chris, a nine-point North Carolina advantage with 11.06 left in the first half. Antoine Jameson, is he not one of the best freshmen in the country? And one of the more undersung and unheralded ones coming in. Quick off his feet. Go to work, young fella. Nice little jump hook in there. Got his body on the defender and then beat him up in the air. Carolina and Tech both 2-0 and in ACC play coming into this one. And of course, we followed the Wake Forest Duke game. And a tight one. This one not as tight. And Zwicker is part of the reason. He's got 10. All they want to do is get the most high percentage shot they can get each possession. And that means making the extra pass. And they do it as well as any team in college basketball. Until your good becomes better and your better becomes best. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever let it rest. That's Marbury's not resting. That's Carolina's motto in terms of shooting. You are quite a poet, my friend. I had to dig into the archives to pull that one out there. It fits this Carolina team in terms of how they look for shots. Okulaja, nice look down low. Jamison had it blocked by Alisma. Wicker trying to follow. Got to be some kind of contact under there. And the foul on Serge Wicker. Dean Smith likes the effort of his big center. He's been a force inside again. Georgia Tech has nobody that can challenge him in there. And he's just not so much out jumping people as he is out reaching them. Clemson leading Virginia. Clemson for real? Possibly. Tell you what, they're playing great right they now. They really are. How about Pitt drilling Georgetown? Unbelievable. Man, it is absolutely wild all over the college basketball landscape. And Clemson and Carolina get together at the Smith Center at 1 o'clock Sunday. That ought to be something special considering Coach Barnes and Coach Smith have not seen necessarily eye to eye in uh, Rick's first season last year. Good move by Eddie Elizabeth. Well, that's one way to maybe negate Zwicker. Oops. Oops. <laughs> He's got 12. Surge getting busy. He Big is fella. surging here as uh, Carolina leads by nine. He might be on his way to a career high. He's got a dozen already. And he's got 12 of their 22. The point I was about to make is that Eddie Elisma may be a tax surge a little bit. Go at him some. Maybe make him use a little energy defensively. And in that way, maybe you can negate what he's doing at the offensive end. He got it into Eddie, but he kicked it right back out to Maddox. Seven on the shot clock. Tech's going to have to hurry one. Barry dribbles through traffic, knows where that clock is, and buries it just before the buzzer. Twenty-two, fifteen. It was a big shot for Tech. They could ill afford a shot clock violation with the way things have gone to open up this game. Good call. They can't afford empty trip. Nice adjustment in midair by Jeff McKinnis, and he's got five. Saunders, who gave Tech a lift in the first half last week against Maryland with his three-point shooting, he could help him out from the outside. Alisma faces Wicker and he goes over the top. Absolutely love it, Brad. E square doing just what he needs to do against the bigger guy. When you're playing against a bigger guy and you're in the post, don't go with your back to him. Face him. Try to use your quickness. And Barry forced that turnover. Georgia Tech could cut it to five or four if that goes. And it does. 24-20. Tech fans finally have something to cheer about. Well, they have been on their hands most of this half. Because their team was one for nine from outside the arc before Barry hit that one. There's something special about seeing that three-point shot go down for the home team. It can ignite a crowd and a team. It's helped Georgia Tech. Okolodge will try one of his own. He's got two of them. Just that quickly, the crowd is quieted. Saunders, he'll try one. Got it. Watch out. Here we go. <laughs> Under 
seven minutes. First half, 27-23. Carolina, they have led from the outset. Marbury played for the steal. Jamison underneath. And all of that really started with a man advantage with Marbury playing for the steal, and all of a sudden it was five on four, and Carolina knew it. You've been doing some basketball the last few years, haven't you? <laughs> Great call, Brad. Great call. One guy gets out of position. You've got a numbers advantage, penetration, help come, find the open guy. And Antoine, an excellent finisher, good pass by Okolaja. That's, uh, that's money. That's like going to the ATM. <laughs> Real easy once you got that secret code and you made a few deposits. Here's the guy with the card. Let's see if he can get a three out of it. Nope, just two. Harpering with a rebound. Point advantage, Carolina. Harpering, nobody near him. And that one rattled out as well. Harpering is struggling. Nobody on that weak side board either for Georgia Tech. Calabria, a nice tuck pass. Okawaja, and now they move it inside. Tried to get it to Zwicker and Barry with a rebound and a timeout. Official timeout. Six minutes, 21 seconds to go first half. Georgia Tech has closed it to a six-point Carolina advantage. We know a good handyman. What a dump. Can you help? Sure. Some primer, a couple of wing nuts. How's that? That'll work. Hey, can you miter cut those floorboards? Will do. Good news. The external beer tap is functional. Yeah. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. I could have done this. Yeah. Chicken from Buffalo, they slow cook on the rotisserie. Hot, hot wings, Buffalo. Buffalo's takes your tap and feet south for the hottest new tastes on the map. We're stepping out in Philadelphia with a loaded Philly steer sandwich. On through the Magnolias to our southern fried chicken sandwich. Coming round the bend is our chicken Rio. Finally, south of the border to sizzling fajitas. Ooh, wait, tasty traveling. Buffalo's in the English language after Chorus Girl. College Hoops! Big Monday's here again. Lots of primo games on the tube again. You better wait till I have to hit the john, my friend. El Grande Monday's here again. Hey, school night, schmool night. You better watch or I'll give you a pop quiz right in the kisser. Eh? Okay, how was that? I smell platinum. In Pittsburgh, it's the Panthers physically taking it to the Hoyas. Chad Varga will miss the jump hook. Watch Gerald Jordan slide in, not boxed out. He throws it down. Meanwhile, the second place team in what we like to call the Gavit Division, also trailing Providence over Syracuse. The standings bunching up. The East Knight. Oh, ACC night here, Carolina leading Georgia Tech. 29-23 and more ACC basketball coming up this weekend. Maryland will take on 8th rank Wake Forest and it's St. Peter's in Manhattan. It is a quadruple header, by the way, on Saturday. Those are the first two right here on ESPN. So just turn on your TV, basically, and watch hoops from, like, in the morning until you fall asleep or pass out at night, whichever. Carter outside. Up and thought that one was going to stay up there with a the shot clock. Dean Smith, 841 career victories. Sometime next year, that record should top. Was that correct? Yep, the right. all-time wins Coach, record. Coach Rupp's 876 will be in some serious danger next year. That'll be fun to watch. Who knows how long he'll coach? We were talking about that before the game. I told him before the game, I'll retire from sportscasting before he's done coaching. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's moving around quite well. Seems to enjoy what he's doing. His golf game flourishes. Carter. Trying to get it back to Calabria. Didn't seem like a good idea, but it pays off. Dante with four. Georgia Tech does not want to get in a turnover situation against this team either, but Marbury will help the cause. Stefan's first triple is 35th of the year. And it's 31-26. Wicker caught it in low, triple team. Harpering trying to help out. Surge still got it off. But Harpering hung in there with him. <laughs> nice look 
such a high. <laughs> Drew Barry just put everybody to sleep, Brett. He went down that lane nonchalantly with the intention of lulling the Carolina guys to sleep and then leaving it for high. Crowd is up at the Omni. That'll slow it down a little bit. Carter with his first bucket of the night. Georgia Tech unable so far to get consecutive stops. That's why they can't really mount any type of surge. You need to come up with stop if you're going to put together runs. And they've yet to do that. We saw that problem last night with Mississippi State against Kentucky. Same problem. Foul as Harper in. Drove the lane. This is one of those delicious dimes here. Drew Barry, head up, just looked off the defense. <laughs> Vince Carter sort of said, how do you do that? <laughs> He's wondering <laughs> who was behind him. He didn't see Hodge behind him. And Zwicker was slow getting back. And Drew Barry closing in on 100 assists already, and we're early in the season. There's Harpering's numbers, leading Georgia Tech in rebounding. And a 78% free throw shoot. Let's go, let's go, we got. Five, five boards, go, go. Uh, excuse me, Clark, five boards for Matt tonight. I tell you what, if you can just put the isolated cam on him, viewers, and just watch how he works at both ends. I mean, he just leaves it out there every yep. night. It's surprising he has a butt left when the night's over because he works it off, that's for sure. 33-30. <laughs> Again, it's down to three. Just over four minutes to go in the half. Carolina at one point. The Georgia Tech has scrapped its way back in. McGinnis working against Marbury. Kicks it out to Calabria. Dante off the mark. And Carolina will maintain possession. Well, Bobby Crimmins the last couple of minutes has gone with Hodge to give him a little more size to try to deal with Zwicker inside. They're dealing a little bit better than they were earlier. Georgia Tech trails Carolina by three. It's Saturday afternoon, almost game time. The TV's on, your feet are up. You've got the remote control in one hand, a great tasting ice cold Miller Lite in the other. And as you take that first ice cold sip, there's only one way to describe it. Ah. Introducing the $16,000 BMW. Presenting the $16,000 Lexus. Behold, the $16,000 Mercedes. To everyone who thought it was impossible to build an affordably priced luxury car, we have just one thing to say. Take a seat. The Nissan Altima. Now own an Altima for zero down, zero APR financing and no payments until April. Put your hands in the air! Thank you. Daring. What's he estimate? 12.2 million. We should take it down. With every score. This crew is good. But one cop. What do we got? Soon they got our phones, they got our houses, and soon they got us. Is closing in. Whatever score they're gonna take next, they're gonna have the surprise of a lifetime. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, Heat, rated R. Now playing. Carolina by three, just under four minutes to play in the half. Coming up on ESPN tomorrow, triple header action. The Golden Gophers of Minnesota take on Penn State in their brand new building with a top 20 ranking. That is Kansas and Florida in the SEC at 9.30. We'll top it off at midnight. Utah State hosts Southern Illinois. A triple header tomorrow night on ESPN. Brad Nessler and Clark Kellogg from the Omni in Atlanta. 33-30, North Carolina with the lead and the ball, but the ballpark didn't last too long. They threw it away. Georgia Tech started off one for nine outside the arc and have warmed up now the last couple. Both of these teams really shooting the basketball exceptionally well to start the conference season. And that's pretty much how Georgia Tech is going to have to play. They're not big enough or strong enough on the glass. 45 to be a good, strong running team. But how about Hodge going to work inside? That's about the strongest move Bucky Hodge maybe has ever made in a Georgia Tech uniform. Over Zwicker and a chance to tie this thing up. 
He's got ample frame to work with now. And he puts it all on Zwicker and then throws up the jump hook. Hoop and harm. Lucky. They, can, they can tie this thing up, huh? Lucky has put on about 15 pounds since last year. I think more importantly, he's redistributed the uh, other weight that he had last year. And he does tie it up. Three-point play. Alisma and Barry get a chance for a breather, and all of a sudden, we have a ball game. And this could really be key if Hodge can continue to make a positive contribution. Gives him a bigger body, and it also keeps some starters fresh. Trying to feed it inside. Turnover, Georgia Tech 2 on one. Harper and Georgia Tech leads for the first time tonight. some trouble got the pass away Jamison got his own miss ties it back up Marbury boy had Harpering flying in on the flank and that caught somebody's foot in route Antoine Jamison really attacks that offensive glass he's not eating glass on that offensive board he's just swallowing it I mean 14 of his rebounds now in conference play on the offensive board, Brad. That's amazing. It sure is. Barry back in. Saunders and Hodge did a nice job in their relief duty. Marbury with three. And Maddox will track it down on the baseline. Barry packs it into Marbury over Zwicker. Good luck. 37 35, Georgia Tech. Good battle going on between Calabria and Barry. A couple of seniors. Look Elijah outside. He likes it out there. He's hit a couple of threes. That one doesn't go. And Alisma to Barry. Marbury had a notion. Ooh, what a spin move that was. Well, they can look at Maddox now. He's got Calabria on him. If they swing it back to Marbury, Maddox could post up Calabria. He's got about a three-inch advantage in that department. Ten on the shot clock. Maddox outside. He can hit out there. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Post him up. He <laughs> wants to shoot a three. He loves to shoot it out there. <laughs> His seventh three of the year, and it gives Georgia Tech a five-point edge. What a turnaround in this half. Roger almost walked with it and then threw it away. Zwicker couldn't handle it as it ricocheted off harder. And Coach Smith, does he want to talk about it? He's going to take a 20 to try to get his troops back in the hunt. A minute 35 left. Coming up on the deuce. Florida State and North Carolina State on Saturday. Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, Florida State. James Collins, their leader in North Carolina State, has Todd Fuller down low. UMass and Rhode Island will follow at two. That's women's college hoops. That's our nothing but net doubleheader, and it just keeps on going. 18th ranked Arizona takes on St. Joseph's from Philadelphia, and then number 25, New Mexico at Wyoming. All that action Saturday, nothing but net on ESPN2. Georgia Tech a five-point advantage, a 17-4 run in the last four minutes. And you know what? I think the catalyst has been Bucky Hodge, Brad. The fact that he came in, gave him an inside presence, gave him a big three-point play, and allowed the starters to get a little bit of a rest up front. And now Georgia Tech has become a little more confident and aggressive defensively, and that's fed over to the offensive end of the floor. Hodge is the guy that tied it at 33. Since then, Carolina has only one bucket. Harpering lost it on the dribble. That's sort of a sarcastic smile from Coach Kremens, I'll tell you that much. A minute left in the half, which means this will be a long and a half time with Cody Taylor. Chris, is Digger hanging out in there I with him tonight? I think Digger's with him. Zwicker in low. Strong move by Serge. This is as good a half as he's ever had in Carolina Blue. 14 with a chance to add to it. Georgia. Big fella just going to work in here, slipping down to the low post. 
catch and finish in one motion. Maddox guilty of the foul. And again, when you're giving up that much size, it's tough to challenge a shot. Grayson Digger, the Della Fawcett halftime report, less than a minute away. Virginia and Clemson's battle, a big upset in the Big East. Sean Kemp and a guy named Jordan who used to wear these colors. All that and more at halftime. Those Bulls have been on a roll towards 70, possibly, Brad. They're just a little bit good again. Marbear, there's a guy that's a little bit good. Yeah, I like it, Stefan. He just gave me the eyes and the nod. Yeah, well, you've got big game, young fella. Just keep working at it. He's got cool way beyond his years. Yeah, I talked to him about that. His older brothers have played a big part in that in terms of helping him know what he needs to do to get to that next level. Carolina walks with it. You know, he's already stretching like an NBA type guy into the martial arts a little bit, understands that he needs strength, not necessarily weight and bulk. You see so many young guys come into college ball thinking they've got to bulk up and get stronger, where basketball is a game of quickness, timing, reaction. You need strength, but it needs to be lean strength. You don't need a lot of weight a lot of times. Georgia Tech, its biggest advantage of the night is up to six. They'd like to add to it before halftime. That is the clock in the corner. Marbury looks up. Barry looks up. He'll be the man with the last shot. And it comes off the front of the iron. Dean Smith looking for an offensive foul call on Barry. Didn't get it. But Georgia Tech trailed all the way up to the point where it was 33 to 30. And then Bucky Hodge, maybe with the move of his young Georgia Tech career, tied it up at 33. And Tech goes on to a 43 37 advantage as we send it to our Delta Foster halftime report and Chris Fowler. Chris? That is thanks. Marbury, only a freshman, but he knows when the TV cameras are there. He likes to play in the big games. Coming up on our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, some surprises, some near surprises, a couple of future lottery picks in action tonight, Allen Iverson and also Tim Duncan. Plenty of scores and highlights as Digger joins me after this. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Nissan. It's time to expect more from a car. And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Heels had a hot start. Jackets came back. They lead by six. Scores and highlights ahead. Time to wash off. Isn't it just like Delta to design a stylish faucet that's practical, too? Give me that. So it's long enough to reach today's double. <laughs> I like it. And even triple sinks. The way water is brought to life. Need a towel? Anybody know McDonald's Big Mac song? To all be fat, special sauce, lettuce. Jeez. Pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Oh, oh, To all be fat, special sauce. I do. Onions and a sesame seed bun. To all beef, honey, special sauce. To all beef, cheesies. Cheesy peepees. Do all beef, special sauce, lettuce. Cheese, pickles, onions, and Oh, I can do anything. Why can't I do this? Have you had your Mac today? Introducing the $16,000 BMW. Presenting the $16,000 Lexus. Behold the $16,000 Mercedes. To everyone who thought it was impossible to build an affordably priced luxury car, we have just one thing to say. Take a seat. The Nissan Altima. Now own an Altima for zero down, zero APR financing and no payments until April. It's our ACC doubleheader, the second half of the game at halftime. The Jackets lead the heels by six. Chris Fowler along with Digger Phelps. Welcome back to our Delta Fawcett halftime report. In the first part of our doubleheader, Duke and Wake Forest. A little bit of desperation time for Duke. They had a couple of big leads in their first two conference games, blew both of them. And tonight, same thing. Double point lead, first half. When you're up double figures, you got to try to ice it away. And that's what Coach Gay is struggling with as you take a look at Duke and what they don't do, Chris. Highlights when you look at what I think is a good team. Grant Hill in attendance. He's can't play, he, he, but he, it he's a good team. It would be nice if you could have played. <laughs> Watch as Carmen Wallace throw it down. And Duke playing good defense early, holding Wake Forest to a terrible shooting start. Then finally, Tim Duncan. Look at the moves there. He's the difference. He rebounds. He goes after the ball inside. Does a great job of scoring. Wake finally got the lead late in the ballgame. Duke 
final seconds. Jeff Capel going for overtime. Never actually got the shot off. The Dukies, just like last year, they lost so many close games last year when Coach K wasn't on the bench. Now he is. What's the excuse this time? Maybe just not a very good team. Well, they, got, they just got to get the experience factor going. Capel's got to play better, and I think defense, they got to step up and make things happen so they can shut down a Tim Duncan. It makes it difficult because with an 0-3 record in the conference, they now have to go and play against Virginia on Saturday. The Cavs fall into Clemson, remaining undefeated at 11-0. That might come to an end Sunday against Carolina. Though. Big showdown. Clemson, North Carolina, probably the match of the year for the ACC. As they're both undefeated, but as we see, North Carolina struggling tonight. UMass remains undefeated, but it was a struggle. Pushed into overtime when St. Joe's hit three free throws in the final second. UMass survives, wins by five. You play at that St. Joe Fieldhouse. It's on campus. It's not the fluster. you got to come in ready to play, and I'll tell you, Mass is happy to get out of there with that overtime win. Hamby with 34. Georgetown of Pittsburgh, John Thompson's team early on looking strong. Iverson running the floor. Boyas had a lead of 29-26, and then Pitt just took complete control late in the first half. Garrick Thomas, vastly improved three-point shooter. They led by seven at the break, and then they kept the pressure going in the second half. That's where Ralph Fuller does a great job offensively, defensively. He's got a young team, but they play well, and this is major, major big time. Yeah, when you can shoot the threes, and all Willard teams can, Aldridge there, Thomas hits a three. Aldridge had a couple of them. It was a 15-4 run to start the second half. 75-56. The Hoyas lose their first conference game. Shocker in the Big East. Shocker. Here's another one. Well, Providence was leading for a while. They had a lead, but Syracuse makes a run now. 3.44 to play. And the Orangemen trying to go to 3-1 and in the conference now with a four-point lead. Virginia Tech against Duquesne. Ace Custis, the tap on his shoulder, says so. He's there for the tip-in. A four-point tech lead at halftime. Second half, Sean Jackson misses. Ace on the glass with the putback. More Hokies in the second half. Troy Manns to Sean Good, the alley-oop. A very athletic team. Very balanced, very well coached. Bill Foster last year thought that the Hokies should have gotten into the big dance. They did, won the NIT, and they're out to prove to people today that they are a solid basketball team. East Custis with 18, Sean Smith had 12. Ohio State and Iowa, Chris Kingsbury burying a three-pointer from the corner. Iowa had a 12-point halftime lead. They're always prepared for the three-pointers in Iowa City. Then Kingsbury makes the seal, pushes it behind the back. Beautiful Nola pass there. Ryan Bowen makes it a 15-point Hawkeye lead. Then up the Andre Woolridge miss. Kenyon Murray with the putback. Iowa just methodically pulling away from Ohio State. Now a 31-point lead. Dr. Tom Davis making a statement. They got embarrassed last week at Purdue. They're back at home where their fans are loyal. Get it going. Ohio State really struggling this year, Chris. Speaking to the Boilermakers, gunning for that third consecutive Big Ten title. It gives them a good chance. They beat Northwestern by 16 points tonight. Coming up, NBA highlights in our Delta Fawcett halftime report. Seattle, Sean Kemp sweating against Michael Jordan. That's more ahead. This halftime report is presented by Delta Fawcett and your dependable Delta plumbing professional. Together, they're the way water is brought to life. Let's face it, people. Hey! Hardaway is the best player the in shot? the NBA. Is this couch real leather? Because it's sticking to my leg. Who's the man with the serious moves? Who's the man with the cooler shoes? The new Air Penny from Nike. In national news, Senators King and Christie of New Hampshire were uh, I guess Spike Lee wasn't available. <laughs> When does a car feel good? When things are easy to reach. So we built a cabin simulator that varies the location of almost everything the driver uses to drive the car. We moved the parts in and out and up and down. It wasn't until everyone was comfortable that we could relax. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Now get 1.9% financing, 500 cash savings, or a low lease rate. Dad? Yeah? There's, uh, something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. 
Ray, forget it, Johnny. When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products, like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Tar Heels and the Yellow Jackets both trying to go to 3-0 in ACC play this season. Right now, it's Georgia Tech leading 43-37. As we continue with our Delta Fossa report to the NBA, when would the Chicago Bulls ever lose a game at the United Center? Maybe when Jordan and Pippen both have flu on the same night. Seattle, you'd think they could give the Bulls a game in Chicago. Eh, eh, not so far. Scottie Pippen had a big first quarter. Baseline drive and the throwdown. It's not Kemp against Jordan in this game. It's Scottie Pippen who's making a statement in the early going. 27 points for Pippen right now. 25 for Jordan. Sean Kemp has thrown in 17. The Sonics were trailing by 17. They've since cut the deficit to 12. Spurs leading the Cavaliers. Sacramento and Boston. Celtics surging back for victory there. Nets and the Knicks. Knicks lose by 13 there. And there's the eight-point lead for the Celtics at this point. In hockey, Red Wings bouncing back from a loss at home. Going the road, lead two zip. Sabres and Jets, a one-zip game in the second period. Against Colorado, the Panthers have drawn first blood. Two zip, the Flames a one-zip lead over the Whalers. And L.A. and Toronto. The game is 5-3. Toronto has the lead. Rangers have a lead in that game. More coming up between halves after this. Well, this is it. Ooh, what a dump. Don't worry. We know a good handyman. What a dump. Can you help? Sure. Some primer, a couple of wing nuts. How's that? That'll work. Hey, can you mitre cut those floorboards? Will do. Good news. The external beer tap is functional. Yeah. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. I could have done this. Yeah. Mercedes from Atlanta Classic Cars have more brains than money. Atlanta Classic Cars, like no other car, like no other dealership. And welcome back to our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Reminder to stick around. Do we have a triple header? Are we going to be here tomorrow? Triple header? First in the new arena at Penn State. You're going to be here. Yeah, Trust me. Like down. Number three, Kansas against Florida. You're going to be here for the late one. Southern uh, Illinois against not. Utah State. <laughs> Eric Franzen, Big West player. Come on, you're sticking around. Other scores of games tonight. Indiana blowing it open, a 16-point lead over Wisconsin. Colorado tightened it up at the six-point lead, but only a minute to play in that ball game. Look at this, Louisville. They win two games in the conference on the road, come home and lose at home to Charlotte by a dozen. Conference USA going to be strong mode here. They're all going to be tough games home and away. LSU and Vanderbilt, very tight game down the stretch. A one-point Tiger lead on the road in the final 25 seconds. Alabama getting some revenge for the football loss. But their power rating is 127. Underrated. Behind Towson Underrated. State. The second half coming up. Isn't it just like Delta? Let's make it really cool. To design a faucet that's at both the height of style. Wow. Awesome. And practicality. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Get out of the car. Crime. Do you ever think about those kids? Punishment. I ain't gonna get no chair, Daddy. Revenge. You're gonna fry, and I'm gonna watch you sizzle. Mercy. You are making it so difficult to help you. You need redemption. What is a nun doing in a place like this? Do you know what you're getting into, assistant? Susan Sarandon. Sean Penn. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. Rated R. Now playing at select theaters. What would you say to a car that has more room and more power than a Saturn Coupe? And a Corolla, 
and a tricelle, and a prism, and a centra, and a civic. And what would you say if that roomier, zoomier, cab-forward, dual-airbagged car also costs less than any of them? How about Hi, Dodge Neon Coupe. Just $99.95 for starters. Now get 1.9 financing, 500 cash savings, or low lease rates. Some people are doing more business than ever on Fridays. The Denver deal doable, Donnie? Good. Help your business do more business with Sprint's amazing offer. For one full year, Fridays are free. No, I'll call you back. It's Friday. Every long-distance call you make on Fridays is free. The rest of the week, you get Sprint's great low-flat rate. Okay, so I'll call you next Friday. Call now. 1-800-598-5000. Don't miss another free Friday. Only from Sprint Business. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Already, it's Pittsburgh clobbering Georgetown trying to pull a surprise. Now Providence. Pete Gillen really doing a great job up there. Coming from behind, pulling this thing up to what we see right now. We haven't got it done yet. Todd Bergen at the line for Syracuse, but the Orangemen trail by a point at the Carrier Dome. We'll keep you posted. Now back to Brad and Clark in Atlanta for our second half. Yes. All right, guys, thank you. Halftime at the Omni, 43-37. to 37. Not something you would have expected had you seen the beginning of this ballgame. If you did, you saw Georgia Tech ice cold Clark Kellogg. They hit 13 of their last 16 shots. Shots 81 percent when it mattered. They closed 20 to six to end the half. They're on a roll right now. Yeah, they really are. They're an excellent shooting basketball team, and when they get the three-point shots to go, it seems like it energizes them defensively, and that's why they've got the lead. Well, they had trouble early with Serge Wicker as his career high as 19 points. He's got 14 at halftime with shots like this. Big fella going to work. Nobody can bother a shot here. Nobody near him. Just a nice feed. He's wide open alone. Bucky Hodge came off the bench, and I thought gave Georgia Tech a nice lift. Only scored five points. Here, running the floor, gets an easy one in transition, had a three-point play that actually tied the game up. And from that point on, Georgia Tech's been in control. 55% from the field for Georgia Tech in the first half, and that is un-Carolina-like, if you will, because it didn't seem anybody ever shoots 50% or better against North Carolina. Mayor Campbell in attendance tonight. And he gave the pregame pep talk to Georgia Tech. And I walked by him on my way to take a break here at halftime. And he said, Brad, you know, it took him about five minutes. It was a delayed reaction for them to understand what I told them before the game. <laughs> as long as it eventually sunk in, that's the bottom line. Mayor Campbell in a, an intense conversation there. Big Georgia Tech fan, obviously. And awaiting the Olympics 191 days from today here in the city. So Dante Calabria and Drew Barry right in front of us set to get it underway to start the second half. Jamison was only three of ten in that first half. He had come in having made 26 of his last 32 in the last two games. Elijah looked down low, brought it back to Calabria. They're going to pack it into Zwicker and start the second half the way they started the beginning of the ballgame. Let's see if North Carolina changes things defensively to allow Georgia Tech all that room outside the three-point line. Well, they were in that zone a good part of that first half. For, oh, what a feed. Great feed by Barry. Got up in the air, faked the shot, and got it to Harpering for the easy deuce. And that's a pretty tough catch in close quarters, Brad. I mean, there was only about three or four feet between the players. Good hands by Harper. Sixth assist on the night for Drew Barry. And that's against only a couple of turnovers. Again, it's against Barry. Harpering will pull off the miss. Elijah will pull off the rebound. Georgia Tech shot 86% inside the arc in the first half, 12 for 14. And it was just that they were so cold outside right. the three-point line early. Five of 17 from behind the arc. And a push on Eddie Alisma from behind. That's Eddie's first foul. you got to give him credit for not getting in foul trouble against the much larger Serge Wicker. 
seven two two sixty five and he's all of that. <laughs> I remember the year that he redshirted and watching Carolina practices and how long he would practice before they worked out how long he would practice after he worked after they worked out and it paid off. Oh yeah. Nothing like perseverance and hard work. There's no shortcuts to getting better. Sure, some guys are a little more gifted than others. When you work, you get better. Drew Barry getting better now as this game goes along. It's his second three of the night. Him and Dante right at the start. Look at him. They're chatting. They're chattering a little bit. They were I talking. Don't know what. Yeah, they were talking right before the half started. Yeah, they were talking in pregame warmups too. Guys, I think that enjoy playing against each other. And Harpering with the hold before the move to the basket. That's his first foul. Jamon Williams is going to come in. Calabria will sit. Second team foul. Number three, Jamon Williams in for the Tar So Georgia Tech with its largest advantage of the night. They're up nine, 48-39, and that is the biggest lead that North Carolina had in the first half. They were up 18 to nine at one point. Whoa. Wide open on the backside with Jamison, but the ball hit the bottom of the backboard. Marbury comes the other way. Strong rebound by Mattis. And now way up there, Okalaja pulls it ahead, three on one Carolina. Barely well held his ground, but Jamison hammered it home. Well done. They got both lanes filled. That's what you need in transition basketball. So often you see the guy with the ball in only one lane field. Harpering with a three. Drew Barry still holding the back of his head after that collision with Jamison on the other end. Georgia Tech by 10. Yeah, Carolina's got to do a better job of tagging the shooters, Brad. They're late getting the shooters in Georgia Tech, making them pay. It was okay at the beginning of the game when Tech hit one of their first 10 out there, but now that they've warmed up, Carolina's got to start getting out to the shooters. What are you talking about? McKinnis, nice penetration, but nowhere else to go except to Williams outside. And now Jeff will take one of his own. Got it. Big shot by McKinnis. McKinnis. Eight for Jeff. And that cuts it back to seven. Carolina back into the zone. Two, three. Which means with ball reversal and movement, you'll get those wing jumpers. And Georgia Tech has been knocking down here in the second half. Barry's got an open. Didn't take it. Marbury. He'll drive into traffic. Nice look into Alisma from Barry, but blocked inside. Eddie with a second try. This one's good. And a foul and a chance for a three-point play. The beautiful feed by Barry and excellent perseverance by a listener. Watch this feed. Barry knows where he wants to go with this before he caught it. He knew that defense was shifting out to him. The shot blocked initially, but E squared showing you excellent effort there. And he'll have a chance for a three point play. But we said it last week when we had Georgia Tech as Syracuse holds on to beat Providence by two. But we said it last week. With Georgia Tech, they seem to feed off of how Barry is playing. That's because right. he's a fifth-year senior, his emotion, energy level, and how he's playing has a lot to do with how successful this team is. Successful enough to be up by 10 over the 10th-ranked team in the country. Long way to go, though. Okalaja, long way out, rattles a three off. Alisma will clear it. Barry, again to Matt. created by a poor shot. That shot by Okalaja was the first pass in the fast break there. Crowd electrified at the Omni now. Georgia Tech leads by a dozen. Again, a strong move on a crossover All dribble, right. and he drew a foul inside. Eddie Alisma will pick it up. That'll be his second. Drew Barry, his dad's here tonight. We talked about the fact that Rick's in attendance, and you know he's got to be loving some of the assists to the tune of seven right now. Yeah, and that, the big thing is the one turnover, Brad. I mean, the dimes are wonderful, but if you're turning it over, that negates them. When he's in the open court, just get your hands ready if you're a texter. Just get ready to catch one. And he gives it to you where you can score. Exactly. I mean, he's not going to give you a pass where you have to do something with it. All you have to do is put it in the hole. 
talking to him one time last year. A lot of those no-look passes, I said, you got to watch out who you throw those to. Freshmen can't handle them. They don't know where they're coming from. Well, these aren't freshmen anymore, with the exception of Marbury, and they know where those passes are coming from now. 15-39 to go. The mayor, thinking that pregame speech is paying off. <laughs> Tech leads by 11. <laughs> If we violate the laws of physics, will we be punished? Well, we did. We gave Stratus a new type of tire that offers the tread life and enhanced fuel economy of a tire engineered for efficiency, yet sticks to the road like a tire engineered for performance. A clear violation of physical law. Thus far, there have been no legal repercussions. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Now get 1.9% financing, 500 cash savings, or a low lease rate. In the stillness of space, the silence has just been shattered. Critics are calling screamers. Get out of here! Smart, scary, sci-fi fun. <laughs> screamers. Wait at R. At theaters, January 26th. What's on the outside of your home says a lot about who lives inside. Whether it's exploring all the color and possibilities of vinyl siding or choosing other carefree exteriors to make a statement, Alcoa gives you all the ways to say it so that you can bring the very best of what's inside, outside. Alcoa Building Products. Picture the possibilities. When sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell, no odor. Why sports cream? Because it works. Providence had a chance for the upset. Syracuse was tough down the stretch, and then Michael Brown trying to send the game to overtime. Comes up short on the three-pointer. The foul at the buzzer, inconsequential, and the Orangemen improved to 12-2. and two. Brad Clark? Chris, Rick Barry looking on. That's, that, that Barry kid can probably already shoot at least 60% from the free throw line. <laughs> Unlike Rick, who was about a 90 percenter. And Drew Barry's dad in attendance tonight. And his son has put on a show with his passing again, Clark. A 3-1 to one assist turnover ratio here in the first two games in the conference. And there's another one here tonight. I think we last showed that he had seven with only one turnover. So... Improving that assist to turnover ratio as we speak. And there you see what he's done in his career. All three years leading Georgia Tech, two years leading the ACC. If he can lead the ACC again this season, he would join Muggsy Bogues and Phil Ford, who's an assistant coach on the Carolina bench, is the only players to accomplish that feat three consecutive years. Well, that's pretty select company when you talk about guys who found open people for who. Georgia Tech has outscored Carolina 33 to 14 over the last 12 minutes. And it's kind of been a gradual thing, Brad. It hasn't been one that we would label spurt ability. But they've got high quality shots and have buried all of them here since about the 10 minute mark of the first half. Speaking of burying one, Barry just buried one. 59 45. The Carolina zone is far too soft. At some point, you wonder if they're going to try to go man-to-man. -man. Saunders will get called for the push, trying to get the rebound on the baseline. Coach Smith a little bit beside himself. His team looked exceptional the first 10 minutes. And even in your 35th year, what has happened over the last 12 or 13 minutes is enough to make your head shake. Well, they've been slow rotating defensively, and then on a couple of offensive possessions, They've taken some poor shots. Marbury goes down, favoring an ankle, not trying to get out of the way, and now they'll blow it dead as Wicker hammers home his 18th point. And you hope that this was just getting kicked in the shin if you're a Georgia Tech fan. And about 15,000 people holding it collected breath right now on Stefan Marbury. Bobby Kermit says, you're going to be okay, and wraps him on the back. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work or not. <laughs> That's kind of a new medicine here. It's the medicine of all coaches, though, with key players. Got him up. Let's see if we can find out what happened here. Excellent possession here by Carolina. Again, as we showed you at the top, looking for the best play, the best shot, rather. And 
Marbury actually another angle. There it is. There he is. It's like he stepped on Zwicker's right, he just foot. just stepped on Zwicker a little bit there. And when you step on Serge's foot, that's uh, sort of like stepping on a barge out in the middle of the water someplace. Zwicker, by the way, has tied his season high. That last jam gives him 18 for the ball game. Good on a three, way short. Here comes McGinnis on the run. And Jeff will back it up. 59-47. Carter cross courts it. Wide open three is short by McGinnis. And now Barry brings it down. Saunders, air ball on a three-pointer. And Barry went for the shoestring tackle and picked up the foul. Probably not a bad foul nope. because Carolina looked like they were going to have a chance for an easy one. First foul on Barry. This has been a relatively foul-free game on both sides of the ball with 13.53 left. Georgia Tech leading 10th-ranked North Carolina by 12, and they are working uh, left ankle of Stephon Marbury. Alisma got a hand on the rebound and knocked away by a North Carolina player, so it'll be Georgia Tech ball. Looks like they'll just retape Stefan's ankle and try to get him back out on the court. And the sooner they do that, the better as he stays warm. The longer he goes with no activity, the tougher it'll be for him to come back and get going again. That one's going to hurt tomorrow if it doesn't already. Alisma. Good thought trying to get it to Maddox in the paint. Knocked away. It's the most important ankle in the city of Atlanta right now. It's uh, <laughs> Stefan Marbury getting retaped. Georgia Tech will slow things down a little bit. They can't slow it too much. Five on the shot clock. Barry, let's go from three point range. Harper in. Step back over his oh. Well, a great work, though. Serge will clear off the second miss. Carter. Got it back. Stripped by Elisma. That looked pretty clean, but they're going to call a foul. Eddie thinks he had all ball. That's a personal foul against Elisma. Triple header coming up tomorrow on ESPN. Minnesota and Penn State. The Nittany Lions open up their new building. That ought to be beautiful. And right now they're playing great basketball. In Kansas and Florida, the SEC will top off our triple header with Southern Illinois and Utah State. Triple header night tomorrow night on ESPN. That foul was on Maddox, not Elisma. So three on Maddox. Two on Alisma and Andy and uh, Michael's going to sit out, and Juan Gaston will check in for him. North Carolina struggling from the free throw line a little bit tonight. And that's not normally like North Carolina. Well, they've really kind of struggled all year, Brad. Only 68 percent as a team. Carter sits. McKinnis comes back in. Carolina only has one foul this half. That's something to uh, keep an eye on, too. Team fouls one North Carolina and six for Georgia Tech. So speaking of free throw shooting, it could become a factor in Carolina's favor as we get on the final 12 45 of the ball game. Gaston, who just checked in, trying to tip it in. And a foul. Okalaja, I think, on Harpering underneath. Georgia Tech getting a little bit of penetration against the zone because they've knocked down so many from outside the arc. They need this guy back in just to have the threat. <laughs> exactly. And his initial move on that bad ankle seems all right. Barry got the inbound pass, though. Gaston keeps it alive and threw it away. Did one good thing and then a bad thing. Gaston just off the bench in for Maddox. 12.38 left in the ball game. 59-48, Georgia Tech leads North Carolina by 11. Well, I think Carolina's going to have to make an adjustment defensively. Not only is Georgia Tech getting good shots, but now they're starting to penetrate against that zone and get offensive rebounds. So 
game. Excellent three-point shooters on the floor for Carolina. And Williams, Calabria. But Jamison goes up strong. Harper and Stronger on the rebound. Aston wheels. First shot of the night for him comes up short. Alisma saved it to Marbury. And now nice hustle by McGinnis. And he can't save it. <laughs> Boy, Bobby Crimmins is an animated one over on that bench, isn't he? We had him and Gary Williams last oh. week. Oh, my goodness. We're talking about guys to get into it. You talk about your pogo sticks. Those two guys will jump up and down a little bit. Marbury looks right into the teeth of Williams and lets fly with a three. Shimano will pull off the miss, though. Barry went for the steal. Calabria alone for three. Got it. We got to watch out for him. Because if he gets warmed up, look out. Oh, yeah, he can stroke it. He's about a 47, 48% career three-point three -point shooter. So he doesn't need much daylight either. I told him before the game, the last time I did you was Florida State. You had eight threes, and you just smile at me. Heartbreak coming alive in this second half. 13 for Harpering to go with 10 rebounds. You know, Harpering's effort is so consistent at both ends that it's only a matter of time before he gets his average. I mean, he just works too hard, and he's a good shooter as well. Played his high school ball about 20 minutes up the road. Shamad Williams. We talked about the three-point fire, firepower on the floor for Carolina, and it's coming to the forefront. Harpering blocked by Jamison. Carolina ball. With 10 minutes and 42 seconds left in the ball game. Almost the midway point of the second half. Georgia Tech clinging to the lead, but it's been cut down to seven. Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck in the world for 19 straight years. Now we're about to launch the next in line. The all-new 1997 Ford F-150. More power. More V8 payload. More new ideas. The new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. It's second down at Bud Bowl, and you're in the game. All right, we still got five plays left. What? Get away! Here, quarterback sneak. Should be like taking candy from a baby. Whoa! All right, coach, no problem. Taking candy from a baby. Oh, no. And suddenly there are four plays left. Get a new play card where you buy Bud, Bud Light, and Bud Ice. Oh. He looks okay. Oh, oh. Gosh. Hope he doesn't need mouth to mouth. No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm all right. I'm okay. Anybody can service automobiles, but you're going to be able to take care of the customer. Can you describe the legend in your evening? Over bumps or do you? Definitely over bumps, I think. They come in to see me because they need something to be fixed. They want me to take care of them. Everybody has different problems. Everybody has different needs. See the way two hours going this? So move it back. The quality care standards. It just opens up that communication, lets people know that we care. Quality care people, quality care standards at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. A wire job. Iowa State and Marquette. Marquette hanging on to a two-point lead. Cyclones going for the tie. This is Zickery, a solo job right here. Cato with a huge rebound, missed it. The tip is no good, and Marquette hangs on to win a thriller. Well, they got a Marquette bunch up of to nine and two. Iowa State Kennedy drops to 11 and four. A lot of close games to tonight, guys. Chris, I got a feeling this one's going to get closer before it's over. 61-54, 10:42 left. The Durham boys are in town. Woody Durham, North Carolina, voice of North Carolina for 25 years, and his son, Wes, the voice of Georgia Tech sports. And those two, I know, have had a great time in town waiting this ball game. And it's uh, given them all something to talk about, and us included. Brad Nestler and Clark Kellogg with you from Atlanta. North Carolina started strong. Georgia Tech surge, and now Carolina trying to make a push. Calabria over to Okalaja. He missed an easy one. And Georgia Tech comes the other way. Georgia Tech's only had two turnovers this half. Well, that's been the difference in their improved play. That and their better shooting. But typically, if you're not turning it over, you're going to get better shots. Past the midway point, second half. Top 
spot in the ACC on the line. And yes, it is early in the season, but it's still a huge game. Look at Hart from work. That was a poor pass by Marbury because he didn't allow Hartford to establish himself in the post there. And the momentary change of possession, the shot clock restarted. Georgia Tech threw it away anyway. So just when we talk about turnovers, they have a couple in a row. Nice speed inside. And Drew Barry is down, Brad. He never got back up after he went down. Only the back of his left knee or his left calf. And you just hope that it's just a cramp, but... As his father looks on, we mentioned earlier how ironic it was that Drew Barry the past two seasons had been injured against North Carolina. And we hope that this is nothing serious. We'll maybe know by the time we get back from our break. 9.23 left. North Carolina has cut the lead down to five thanks to Jamison's jam underneath. In today's business world, over-regulated by government, there is one company taking the lead in reducing the high cost of traditional workers' compensation, First Oglethorpe. First Oglethorpe offers a proven alternative that can lower your premiums by up to 40% and put control of your claims in your hands. Ask your insurance agent about First Oglethorpe or call us today, 1-800-388-9675. Sega Saturn, Japanese 3DO, Sony, PlayStation, Super Famicom, CD-ROMs, VDO, Super Nintendo, Sega. Hard to find, just got easy, Japanese or domestic. Use games, save up to 80% off, three months guarantee at Swap USA, Sandy Springs and Marietta. Your generals, Jared Hass and Jock Vaughn, pilot the Jayhawks into Gainesville to take on the Gators. Kansas, Florida, tomorrow at 9.30 on ESPN. Later on SportsCenter, Seattle tries to put a blemish on the Bulls' home court. Charles Haley makes an appearance in practice. Wayne Huizenga goes fishing for the big one. Keith Overman, I'm Carl Rabbit, SportsCenter after the game. Saturday, Tim Duncan leads eighth-ranked Wake Forest against the Maryland Terrapins. Then Cincinnati's Damon Flynn and the fourth-ranked Borca uh, Bearcats tackle Marquette. That's all part of a quadruple header. Coming up on Saturday, St. Peter's and Manhattan at 2, 13th-ranked Utah and Hawaii at midnight. Four games for you Saturday on ESPN. Georgia Tech's lead has been cut down to five. Drew Barry on the bench. It appears that it's only a cramp in his left leg. At least the way they were working <laughs> you got to hope that. Georgia Tech has cooled off. And Carolina has two. Carolina inching its way back in, and they come up with another turnover. And they want a 20-second timeout. McGinnis on the floor didn't want a traveling violation called. Coach Smith, I think, could use uh, could do without that timeout, but he didn't look too happy with it. But, they uh, ambushed Georgia Tech there, Brad, right out of that timeout. Marbury picks his dribble up at the half court line, got himself sandwiched between two Tar Heels, and then comes up. See, he wasn't expecting this. Never saw McGinnis until it was too late. And then his teammates didn't help him there because they weren't ready for it. Excellent call and execution that time by North Carolina. Marbury's been shaken up a little bit in this half. A bad left ankle. Drew Barry. Looks like he's set to go back to the scorer's table. Meanwhile, on the court, North Carolina, as we approach the nine-minute mark, has cut it down to a handful. It was once 14. It was 59 to 45 at one point in this game. And you talked about the foul situation now. Carolina shooting the rest of the way. While they have four to give as a team, they only have two team fouls right now as Drew Barry checks back in for Michael Maddox. Georgia Tech with a smaller lineup now in Saunders, Marbury, and Barry. And there's a team foul situation Clark's talking about. Meanwhile, Shaman Williams, one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC, steps up. 86 percent. That's why. 
all his points have come this half. The sophomore of the Greenville, South Carolina. Had a good game against North Carolina State a couple of games ago. 14-point mm -hmm. outing in that one. Yeah, he started in place of Jeff, Jeff McInnes, right. who was out with that bruised thigh. And now Carolina in the position you want to be in when you're down. Tex Downing had two points in the last almost six and a half minutes of this ball game. Now they've got both Barry and Marbury on the court. Let's see if that makes a difference. Tech has become, in my mind, just a touch tentative. Yep. And you knew North Carolina was going to crank up the pressure defensively. Marbury foul on his way to the hoop. McGinnis got him. Yeah, that wouldn't be even have counted in the NBA. <laughs> We're a continuation. Of... Nothing can continue that long. <laughs> That's right. Don't forget scores at 10, 30, and 50 past every hour, each and every day, 24 hours a day on ESPN. As you see some of the other scores from around the country, and our score, 61 to 58. As Chris Fowler said, it's a night of close finishes, and I got a feeling it's going to be that way at the Omni as well. Carolina mixing up their defenses back in that zone. Harpering had a pretty good look. Saunders tried to tip it in, and now it comes free back to Saunders. Tech needs a hoop here. They desperately need a hoop to keep this crowd in it and for their own morale. Marbury to Harper. Everybody having a look and nobody pulling the trigger. Now the freshman will. They got it. Kermit says, that's why I spent all that time in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> time well spent, because this guy can go. Nice drive inside by Williams. He leaves it off. Okolaju with a big hook shot. He's got eight. 64-60. Marbury up front. One's way short. Harpering with a little Lorenzo Charles thing underneath. Picked up what is going to end up being an assist for Marbury and a chance for a three-point play. Swicker never saw the orange. Harpering kept his eye on it the whole time. Look at him work. I mean, this is what we talk about when we say keep active, stay aggressive, stay active, keep moving. See, Okolaja never saw it. Harpering had his eye on it the whole time. Surge picks up his third foul. Harpering, that's a strong double-double. It's just getting better. And this was a guy who wasn't that heralded, at least in basketball, coming out of high school. Jamon Williams, and again, Barry hobbled. Williams wide open. Battling underneath, Jamison and Alisma. And Georgia Tech's going to finally win that battle underneath. Drew Barry's got more bad wheels than one of Bill Elliott's race cars right now, but he's still out there running around. Harper. Alisma tried to tip it. Zwicker will clear it off. Williams all the way down, Harpering with a steal. Marbury's out in front to Barry. Good look by Stefan Marbury. And Georgia Tech stretches it back to nine. And the crowd starting to sense an upset, but still a long way to go. Six minutes left and change. Williams, nice move inside. They're hooping, Brad, at both ends. That's a great move to kind of quiet this crowd. The Carolina with McInnes and Williams out there, they've got two guys who can penetrate off the dribble, and that means maybe Calabria can get spot-up jumpers or those guys can finish inside themselves. Calabria's been pretty quiet tonight, no doubt about that. Seven points, only one three-pointer. Yeah, like Drew Barry, he's, he's had some nagging injuries this year, and you just never know how healthy he is. Leans in. A 
three with three on the shot clock. 16 for Barry. Just when Carolina had made a push, Georgia Tech is pushed back. And we've got five minutes remaining at the Omni. Calabria, nice hook pass inside. Yeah, you look at Calabria, you're right, he hasn't been much of a factor. In. He's not moving real fluidly. He had a badly sprained ankle earlier in the year. You look at him and you can see he's favoring that ankle. He's not at 100%, that's for sure. The battle that he and Barry have had at times when they're on each other, they're not right now. It's really been fun to watch away from the ball. Yeah, it's not all been physical either. It's nope. been, there's been some verbal sparring <laughs> going on too. A little jaw jacking taking place between those two. Marbury, three on the shot clock. Came up short, but Tech keeps it alive. Eddie Alisma with a rebound. How big has Alisma been inside for Georgia Tech? And Bobby Crimmins wants to talk about it. A 20-second timeout with 4.15 left in the ballgame. Yeah, he's going to diagram a play here to try to get Barry or Stefan Marbury, maybe Harper, one of his top three guys, a shot. Well, the remade Alexander Memorial Coliseum is not yet completed. It will be in about 10 days. In fact, that's when Tech will reopen their home facility against Virginia. But right now, the Omni is doing just fine. They don't play as well in this building as they do at the Thriller Dome. But tonight, it's rocking in here. This is just a tough shot by Barry. He finds a little seam in the zone, gets McInnes to join the Paratroopers Club, and then just <laughs> leans in under him. But that's a tough shot by Drew Barry. Sometimes you just have to tip your hat to the offensive guy. Waited for the shoot to fall before he took the shot. Harpering, triple team, had it stuffed underneath. Carolina needed that stop. On the offensive end, who else? The freshman, Jamison with 14. And he struggled compared to what he's normally done as far as shooting, but still unafraid to take big shots. He's got an excellent touch and a quick release. Saunders a good shooter. Rush that one, maybe. Zwicker with a rebound, and here comes North Carolina again. McGinnis over Barry. Harpering battles the big boys and gets the ball back for Georgia Tech on the possession arrow. Official timeout. Three minutes, 29 seconds left in Atlanta. 72-66 Yellow Jackets. That was some kick. Thanks, man. You know I'll never forget today's game as long as I live. You kick, there man. must have been a couple hundred people out there. Not a cloud in the sky. And my man Chuck over here with the twisted ankle get the 25 yard. <laughs> we'll be talking about this for years. Absolutely. Hey, did we ever tell you ladies about the kick? The kick? 2,000 people were cheering us on in the pouring rain. And then Chuck, with the Brooklyn leg, no less, kicked the game-winning field goal from 25 yards out. Wow. What a kick. <laughs> did I ever tell you kids about the kick? 50,000 fans going absolutely crazy. It was in the middle of that freak November blizzard. And then your dad, in a full-body cast, came up with that miracle kick from 16 yards. You ever notice how things seem to get better and better around a Pizza Hut pizza? I remember it like it was yesterday. Absolutely. Pizza Hut. You'll love the stuff we're made of. It's easy to see why Ford has had five of the ten top-selling vehicles in America for six straight years. Because when you look into a Ford, you'll find innovation, attention to detail, and exceptional value. Qualities that have made Ford F-Series America's best-selling truck for 19 straight years. And for the fourth straight year, made Taurus America's best-selling car. With this kind of success, the next thing you see when you look into a Ford might just be yourself. World Business Class from Northwest Airlines and our global partner KLM with more comfort, choice, and convenience. It's simply the best business to be in. Some people just know how to fly, yeah. 
Tech by six in this ACC men's battle with 3.29 to go. Friday night on ESPN2, ACC women's hoops. 13th ranked North Carolina State takes on 8th ranked Virginia. Friday night, 7.30 on the deuce. A member of the world champion Atlanta Braves, Mark Lemke. He was in that tech locker room before the game, too. <laughs> that must have been a packed house. <laughs> Standing room only in there. My team, the Braves, I can actually outrightly cheer for a team because I don't do baseball. World champs on the floor. Battle for the top spot early in the ACC season between Georgia Tech and North Carolina with 325 left. And 15,243 looking on at the Omni. Down in the winning time segment of a close game, you need to make sure you're executing. Screens have to be set. The ball has to be moved. And then, obviously, you need your big players, your marquee guys, to make plays for you. And setting and picks and going around him, and Calabria, going around one of them, picks up his first foul. Now, he just doesn't have the push off of that leg. I mean, I've watched him all night. And he's actually laid on a few screens because he just doesn't have the strength to move as he, as he would like to. Fresh 35 on the shot clock with a little over three minutes to go. Got to keep it out of that baseline, off that baseline in that corner. You want to stay in the middle of the court and along the wings against this zone. There you go. Marbury for three. Too strong. Calabria the rebound. Dante with the outlet. A good one to McInnes. And that's Jamal Williams. Excellent three-point shooter on the other end. It's Wicker. Big rebound for Carolina. McGinnis got up in the air and didn't have anywhere to go. He did get it to Jamison. Yeah, he's left his feet a couple of times. As you look at Jamison, he took a shot to the chin. Not easy in that paint area. Williams again open for three. Didn't take it this time. We're looking hard for him work. Really trying to keep it out of Jamison's hands. Trying to leave it for Zwicker. He didn't go to the hoop. And an unforced... Turnover. Those kind of Coach Smith can't even watch. He turned the other way on that one. Yeah, well, they were all graped up. No space in there, Brad. All graped up. Yeah, like, like grapes on the vine. Yeah. You know, just locked in tight. <laughs> you never cease to amaze me. 210 left. Got to keep the alert, Mark. Mm -hmm. as it will now tick under two minutes. Maddox for three. Hart bring the tip. How big is this kid played, especially in the second half? He's a guy you can hang your head on night in and night out, Brad. Coaches love those kind of guys. Shimon Williams, that's a huge three at a timeout, North Carolina. That has been a soft spot the last half dozen times down the floor against Georgia Tech. Shimon has parked himself over there, and Georgia Tech has not adjusted to his presence on that wing. Coach Smith jumped off the bench, wanted a timeout, did not get it in time, and with 120 left, five-point ball game. Harpering, double team, goes up anyway. Jamison pulls off the miss. Here comes the Tar Heels. Three on two. McGinnis, triple. Big! Now they get the timeout. With 107 left. Two-point ball game. Georgia Tech 74, North Carolina 72. We'll be back. No one can save you now. Hey, bet we could. Fools, we will defeat you and take your Miller Lite. Not if we choose the weapon. Paper football, very clever. You kick off. It's good. We are safe. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. You are worthy opponents. Let us celebrate. I know a good sports bar around the corner. Life is good. <laughs> You'd never seen anything like it. But you soon learned its name, a name that dominated the 80s. Now Ford Taurus lays claim to a new era with another revolutionary design. With outstanding performance, a roomier interior, and a penchant for quality that have led to a familiar result. For the fourth straight year, Ford Taurus is the best-selling car in America. The new Ford Taurus, picking up right where it left off.
ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Pizza Hut, home of stuffed crust pizza. Georgia Tech leading, but not by much now. 74-72. playing like a dock worker for Georgia Tech tonight <laughs> as they are clinging to a two-point lead with 107 left. Here's Harpering working inside. Look at his activity. Got himself right in front of the rim for the tip in. But you want to talk about as we get another angle over Zwicker, inside Zwicker. How about the other end? Calabria knew it's not his night. Going to feed this thing out, back out to McGinnis. Well, two guys came at him. Barry and Marbury both attacked Calabria and Jeff McGinnis. McGinnis was trailing, and that's one of the best times and most ideal times to shoot the three in transition because, again, defenders are naturally taught to go to the ball and to gravitate to the paint. McGinnis with a little push bumps Marbury, bringing it up court. As Chris Fowler said earlier, it is buzzer night around college basketball. Everything decided at or near the buzzer. We have 60 seconds left in this one. That's when it's fun to be hanging out in that studio. I'll tell you what. You got those monitors going and buzzer beater here, buzzer beater there, upset here. Nothing like being in the house of a close one, though, either. Coming down to this. Georgia Tech led 43-37 at halftime. They stretched it to 14 in this half. But North Carolina, with no quit in it, has come back to make it a two-point game. And now Tech's going to use some clock before taking a shot. Carolina doesn't have a foul to give, so Tech shoots on the next foul. I think you get it in Marbury's hands and try to let him penetrate. Or Barry, and he has it right now with five. They'll double-team him. Saunders is going to have to launch one. And he got it! Pushes it the other way. We're under 20 seconds. Shimon Williams off the glass. All 12 of his points this half. He's been large. Very large. Great play there. They didn't use too much time. About 10 seconds. And they got the deuce in the timeout. Georgia Tech had only had two field goals in almost a five-minute stretch. And then with one second left on the shot clock. Gary Saunders, a 6'5 freshman out of New York, hit its biggest shot of the game, his biggest shot of his young Georgia Tech career. Boy, this is excellent defense by North Carolina. Challenging the ball, Okalaja maybe could have been a little more aggressive challenging in it, but that's a tough shot that goes down for Saunders. I mean, the shot clock about to expire. You don't want to foul. Keith Oberman and Carl Ravage. They're sharpening their utensils to talk about the upsets in college hoops. Title news in the NFC and the AFC. A trade in baseball. All that and a lot more. Keith and Carl coming up in 14.1 seconds. Barring overtime. Here you see Bobby Grimmins trying to get his guys to get to the right spot. And just as important as being in the right spot. seconds to come up with the steal, steal out of the trap but after that it's the immediate foul and then you work yourself in the position after that and the guys they would like to stay away from as far as fouling are Marbury, Barry and Harpering the three best free throw shooters for Georgia Tech and obviously they're all on the floor as is Maddox and Saunders North Carolina seven and two against Georgia Tech in this building the Omni but right now Georgia Tech with 14.1 seconds away from an upset. Full court pressure as we expected. Barry's got a hustle, calls a timeout. I'm out, Georgia Tech. So we've still got 14.1 seconds left. Yellow Jackets will talk it over. We'll see what they do when we come back. F-Series has been the best-selling truck in the world. 
19 straight years. Now we're about to launch the next in line. The all-new 1997 Ford F-150. More power. More V8 payload. More new ideas. The new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. It's second down at Bud Bowl, and you're in the game. All right, we still got five plays left. What? Wait. Here, quarterback sneak. Should be like taking candy from a baby. Whoa. All right, coach, no problem. Taking candy from a baby. Oh, no. Oh. And suddenly there are four plays left. Get a new play card where you buy Bud, Bud Light, and Bud Ice. Oh. He looks okay. okay. Oh, oh. Gosh. Hope he doesn't need mouth to mouth. No, I'm, uh, I'm okay. No, I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm all right. I'm okay. Brad Nessler and Clark Kellogg in Atlanta, where we have enjoyed all 39 minutes, 45.9 seconds so far, and 14-1 <laughs> left. Georgia Tech has seen what Carolina is going to offer in the form of pressure. Called the timeout as they had trouble getting the ball in. And let's see what they do this time. Drew Barry will be the trigger man. Going to have to hustle again. And now a foul before they ever even got the pass involved. And that will send Stephon Marbury to the free throw line on the other end. Lynn picks up the foul. And now he'll come out and Jamison will go in. Now, if Stephon Marbury can knock down two free throws here, what Georgia Tech wants to do is defend and try to make North Carolina use some time and not allow them to get a quick shot. And obviously, Georgia Tech, if two free throws go down here, they don't want to foul. Pretty cool freshman. His first trip to the line tonight, and he rips it. Georgia Tech, seven out of eight as a team from the free throw line. Can they build youngsters that play so much more mature? Two big free throws by Marbury. 78-74. Now Tech needs some pressure, but they don't want to foul too quickly here. Big three-pointer. Okolaja, that is his third of the night. None bigger than that one. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nope. Both of these teams outstanding shooting clubs, and they've struggled a bit in the second half in spots, but here lately. Adi Mola. Okolaja with the shot of his young North Carolina career. Created by the penetration of Shaman William, drew people to himself, then pitched it. And he's had a tremendous second half. Shaman Williams penetrates, draws people to him. And, you know, a lot of times when you're guarding a guy who's not really a three-point shooter, you leave him to help out. And that's exactly what happened in Okolaja. Barry, that, he shot that one like he meant it. like Georgia Tech's going to try to pass it two people out of bounds and try that play to try to get the ball in play. But. And there you look at the reset. So Georgia Tech has a timeout. Carolina does not have any left. And also Bobby Crimmins has his three best free throw shooters in the backcourt looking to try to handle the ball. Harpery, Marbury, and Drew Barry. Sports center in 7.6 seconds if we don't go to OT. So now, if they follow Bobby Kremen's instructions, it'll yeah, be Barry to Harpering out of bounds. And there it is. Now right back to Barry, and he's fouled by Jamison. Well, I think that worked about as well as Bobby Kremen's <laughs> wanted it to. Yeah, well executed. And by throwing it to Harpering, who stepped out of bounds, that gave Barry a chance to just come in and seal his defender. Again, the look at the play that Bobby Kremen's diagram. Barry to Harpering out of bounds and right back to Barry and the quick foul. Well, we saw 
the freshman Marbury rip his two free throws and now it's the senior captain's time. Carolina's out of timeouts by the way. Barry missed it. Harpering had a hand on it. Barry got it back on the baseline. He pulled a David Copperfield on the baseline and got the ball back. Harpering kept it alive though. Harpering we've talked about his activity and his effort all night long as you look at Hall of Famer Rick Barry. Rick Barry saying I didn't teach him how to shoot free throws but I taught him how to follow his miss. Look at that. Well I tell you what Harpering kept it alive but Okalaja and it looked like Shaman Williams had a chance to get it. And one guy thought the other guy was going to get it. Drew Barry with a second chance doesn't miss two and a half seconds left Carolina out of timeouts Georgia Tech if Barry hits this one Carolina can still tie it with a three Barry got them both 80 77 here's your game Georgia Tech upsets Tenth rank North Carolina believe this. You wrote down the score of this game before it started. How about that? Georgia Unreal. Tech 80. North Carolina 77. And to the top of the ACC heap go the Yellow Jackets. Carolina falls to 2-1 and one and 11-3 and three overall. A Georgia Tech team in search of itself a week ago on a losing skid and now they have beaten Maryland, Duke, and North Carolina back to back to back. And Drew Barry, the two free throws that iced him. Well, 15,243 enjoyed their night in Atlanta, Georgia. The ACC off to a wild start and who'd have thought Bobby Kremen's Yellow Jackets would be to the head of the class with an 80-77 win. For Clark Kellogg and our entire ESPN crew from Atlanta, Brad Nessler saying so long. Sports Center is next. Coming up on Sports Center, Sean and the Sonics hope to rain on the Bulls parade for a second time. Jimmy and Wayne talk turkey about the fish. Yeah, one of the uh, big issues is uh, Jimmy has to shave his head. <laughs> <laughs> Will this chuck wagon circle in the new frontier? Because I'm the one who has the product, and they can't do anything without the product. The Cavs get word on their most wounded warrior, a shark sighting in some dangerous New York waters. Wondering if Foya Paranoia is a one-man show? You like us? You really like us? Sports Center's your main course. Next. Hello and welcome alongside Keith Overman. I'm Carl Ravitch. Live from ESPN World Headquarters, it's the big show. Tonight, upsets and near upsets in college hoops. The Bulls going for more and the hockey goalie who won't change his underwear, but he'll change his name instead. But first for the Dolphins, gone today, hair tomorrow. Or is it hair now? Welcome everyone. Welcome Jimmy Johnson. Fox Network sources, Dallas Cowboys players close to Johnson and NFL sources tell ESPN's Chris Mortensen that Jimmy Johnson has accepted an offer to coach the Miami Dolphins. An official announcement could come as early as tomorrow. Contract details are being finalized. Johnson could not be reached for comment. Brian Weedmeyer, the Dolphins assistant GM, said he could not comment when asked to confirm the story. But ESPN has learned, Chris Mortensen from sources at Fox, from sources close to the Cowboys and those close to Johnson, that Jimmy Johnson has accepted an offer to coach the Miami Dolphins. Keith? Last year, the Orlando Magic won their first 21 home games. And then on February 2nd, the Seattle Supersonics breezed into Central Florida and broke that streak. This year, the Chicago Bulls had won their first 17 home games. And guess who breezed into the midway tonight, intent on breaking that streak? Yep, the same Seattle Sonics, America's guests. That would be M. Jordan and S. Kemp. And their showdown was preempted. Scotty Pippen already in progress. Mm, good evening, Mr. Kemp. A little bit more, Scotty, from way downtown. Bang. 12 points in the first quarter as he stole the show. Michael chipped in and backed in and then faded in. Bulls up 28-26. Jordan, 11 points in the first quarter. Pippen and Jordan were hot. Peyton and Kemp were not. Kemp inside, can't get it to fall. Peyton, the driving, yeah, up. 
And the Bulls take the rebound. And not a night to remember for these gentlemen. You like me, you like me, say the Bulls. They're passing. Pippen to Luke Longley to MJ for the reverse jam. The world. Bulls on a 12-0 run. Rodman unhappy with a foul call. Ejected by the ref. Nearly had a fight with his teammates. Oh, you, you didn't have to go and do this. Well, thank goodness he stopped there. Souvenir Dennis Rodman shirt night. His first eject ejection as a bull, but probably not his last. Jordan, meanwhile, not phased. Penetrates, acrobatic shot, and it counts. The Bulls win 113-87. Michael, 35 points, 14 boards. And the Bulls finally prevail in big fashion over the Sonics by the final of 113-87. to Remember when the new building opened, all the problems the Bulls were having, adjusting to the depth of the background, how it messed up their shooting? They adjusted. The opponents did not. Three of the last six visitors have shot under 40%. Nobody higher than 43 and a half. Off a lackluster loss in Atlanta, the Kings go into Boston. Tyus Edney, the star the other night, out with an ankle injury. Bobby Hurley picked up the slack. To Walt Williams, the wizard, the drive and the foul. Second quarter, Hurley, Tyrone Corbin, not the wizard. Gets a little glass. King shot 70% and a half lead by 13. Mitch Richmond, two from Hurley. Nine shots in a row for Richmond. Kings up by 25 points at MJ or ML Carr. Cook, Chief Cook and Bottle Washer inspires the Celts. Rick Fox, the drive of the foul. The lead is 14. Williams turns it over. A minor tragedy. Greg Miner. Celts down by nine. Still in the fourth, Dino Raja picks up the loose ball. He falls down. It falls too. Raja had 25. Three minutes left. Celts are down three. Dana Barros drives on Hurley. Stops, pops, it drops. Celts within one. Now the Celts by six with a minute left. Free beverages for every Sacramento King. And this put the ale on ice. Greg Miner the fall away. Celtics rally from down 25 in the third to win 113-104. to 104. Despite 31 from Richmond, the second straight Sacramento defeat. Roger with the 25 points, 10 boards. Barros with 22. And Greg Miner scored 20 points, 16 of them in the fourth quarter as Boston outscored Sacramento 51 to 17 in the final 16 and 35. Carl. Well, during their 0 7 start, the Cleveland Cavaliers heard all about balls, ping pong balls, as in keep losing, become the favorite to get the number one pick. Fact is, over the next three years, the Cavs have five first rounders. Would a lottery one be so bad? Well, it would be if you currently play for the Cavaliers and are sick of losing. Coming off their biggest loss of the year, Brad Doherty for the season. Cavs actually thinking playoffs in San Antonio and thinking about getting healthy. Tyrone Hill in front of Brad Doherty, who were both on the bench. Ouch, the Admiral through the hole. And then more from David. Pretty little scoop here. Beats Danny Ferry. And the Spurs are rolling along early. They had it working from the outside as well. David did it on the inside. Sean Elliott going for... Robinson. Three. The open three. And he can hit them all. Then again, Elliott for three more. 14 in the first quarter for Sean Elliott. The Cavs come alive in the second quarter. Terrell Brandon says, do me a favor. Get it out of here. Bobby Phil's on the other end. People at 5 feet 11. Oh. Exploding to the hoop. Spurs too much, though. The Admiral misses the lay in. Going to get the board over. Let's see. One, two, three, four. There's five Cavs and there's Robinson. The Spurs led all the way and they continued to lead all the way until the game clock expired. 92 86, the final score for the Spurs. The Admiral goes for 24 and 20 rebounds. Sean scores 26. Michael Cage adds 20. The Cavs have not won in San Antonio since 1988. 0 oh, and 7. Speaking of ping pong balls, the Nets hosting the Knicks. Sean Bradley, Chris Childs, the turnover. Childs pushing. Oh, through the legs. Armin Gilliam. The Nets are up 31-22 after one. Second quarter. Patrick Ewing keeps it close. Hubert Davis. Patrick. I think I will take it. Knicks down eight at the half at that point. Third quarter. They try to take over. Anthony Mason. With four on the clock. Anthony Mason. Point God. Off the window and in. Nets down one with seven seconds left in the third. Kevin Edwards, chuck it up. Chuck it down. Look at this guy hustle too. The Nets are eight and three when leading at the start of the fourth, thanks to D.J. Brown. Bradley, get out of here. And on the other end, Bradley goes in for the big board and muscles it in, if you can call it that. Nets put the lid on the on this game when Kenny dishes to Gilliam. Baseline J, and the Nets are winners 92-79. Chris Childs, 21 points. Many of them in a 14-6 run to start the fourth quarter. Gilliam ends up with 22, Ewing 23, and Anthony Point God Mason, 21 points, 13 rebounds. A year ago tonight, January 10th, 1995, then number one UMass went to OAN New York to face St. Bonaventure. The Minutemen came up quite a few ticks shy of an hour 
and only Michael Williams' basket kept UMass alive into overtime, where they hung on to win and to hang on to first in the ratings. Tonight, January 10th, 1996, again number one UMass visited another Saint, St. Joseph's. This time it was St. Joe's forcing overtime, and then Edgar Padilla scoring six points in the OT as UMass squeaks out Another January 10th overtime, number one preserving win against a school named for a saint. We expect to have highlights later on in the big show. UMass breaking the team record from 33-34 when they won their first 12. They're now 13-0. It was their only 12 that year. They run roughshod through such powers then as Amherst, Tufts, and Worcester Polytech. The school all-time record 16 in a row. Allen Iverson and company at Pittsburgh for Georgetown in the first half. This was a guh game for Iverson. Kahati White rebounds, slams it in for the Hoyas. And then, something you would not see much all night. Iverson with a basket. The Hoyas had a seven-point lead, and it was good night, nurse. Garrick Thomas from way downtown. Garrick Thomas from way, way downtown from the NBA three, and Pittsburgh led by seven at the half. Greg Lloyd watched, to his amusement, Andre Aldridge. Sheesh. Panthers open the half on a 19-4 run. Chad Varga misses inside. Gerald, I'm not Michael Jordan, slams in the follow-up. And Pittsburgh, huge. In that fatal stretch at the start of the second half, the Hoyas shot just 30.6%, got two field goals in 12 minutes. The Hoyas missed 18 of 23 pointers of the night. Iverson made one of 11 he had a total of a dozen points. Get a roll of collegiate stamps and mail it in. Wow. From Iverson is God to Providence is God, Sham God. The Friars versus Syracuse. Lazare Sims lost it, shot it. Todd Bergen followed with the slam. There's the replay. Kabong in your face. Syracuse by a dozen. Still in the first half. Otis Hill on the run. Spinderella. Syracuse by nine at the break against the Friars. They come back in the second half. Jason Murdoch to Jamel Thomas. Yep. And part of a 13-2 run by Providence. Four Friars, Todd Bergen, blocked by Derek Brown. Off the scrum, he picks up the air ball and goes all the way up. 62-61 Providence. And Syracuse answers. Here's John Wallace to Reef Snyder. Two-hander, 1936. Syracuse goes ahead down the stretch, making free throws. Friars chance to tie Kalank from Michael Brown. And Syracuse wins 77-75. Wallace, the high man with 22, as Jacques holds on. By the way, if you're wondering about God Sham God of the Providence Friars, he's from New York City. He has six brothers and sisters, including Shamel Sham God, Sham Kwana Sham God, and Prince Asiatic Sham God. His dad's name is God Sham God as well, and you know that what that makes him. Carl. Well, God at Duke is Coach K. Could it be that not even he was enough to lift the Blue Devils back to respectability? Could it be that the team which began the season unranked, then climbed to number 12, actually woke up and realized it was playing above its collective head, back exactly where they were after two conference games last season, 0-2, maybe sleeping is a good idea because here comes number 8, Wake Forest. There's Grant Hill. They offered him to put a uniform on. He said, I couldn't do that. Duncan out, blocked by Greg Newton, and Greg Newton is all fired up. And then Wake has trouble getting it into Duncan. Bounce pass off Duncan's fingertips. That's Blue Devil ball. Duncan, six points, five turnovers in the first. Second half, Duke breaks. Chris Collins, Carmen Wallace. The double clutch jam. Collins, five assists, and Coach K. All right, we're intense. I'm down on the floor. We're up four. Can we stay that way? Somebody woke up the sleeping giant. Tim Duncan. Pass Newton for the dunk. Odom's fired up now. Then less than two to go. Duncan up under Newton for the layup. Duncan, 24 points. Wakes up one after they hit two free throws. Duke with the last chance. Jeff Capel, two. No. Duke loses by three, 57-54. Last season, it was Randolph Childress who did it. This season, it's Duncan. 12 of the final 16 for Wake. Dave Odom said Duncan quit worrying about his 338 moves and used the one he knows how to use, taking the ball to the basket. There were tears in the Duke locker room following the loss. Real tears. Clemson still hasn't lost a game hosting Virginia. There's Jeff Jones, first half. Curtis Staples, Harold Dean. Dean for three. He only had 39 points. Greg Buckner the drive and the reverse layup. It goes. And then Dean on D. The steal from Jamel Robinson. And Harold's going the other way. Virginia is up by a pair at the half, 34, 32. The score at that point. Second half, bounce pass. Harold Jameson, and then Jameson lays it up and gets fouled. Clemson down one. Tigers, could they pull away? Well, could Buckner hit a hook? He certainly could inside the lane. And then the long outlet in Buckner and Clemson, 89-74. Second best start in Clemson history. 11 years ago, they began 11-0 as well. 
Tigers end a seven-game losing skid to the Cavs. Merle Code got hurt in this game. Fell hurt his knee. X-rays to be taken on Thursday. Also in the top 20, 7-1 Hokies at Duquesne. Ace Custis. The Hokies win their first ever conference game. Jim Jackson misses down low. Ace second effort to tip it. Hokies down one. Custis, a good game, 18 and 17. Ace, the follow away miss. Sean Smith there to jam it home. Second half, Hokies now up just six. Jackson shot won't go. There's the ace. Tech by ace. Later, Hokies up big. That was the alley-oop from Troy Manns to Sean Good, who's real good, up by 16. They go on and win. 88 to 69, the final. Custis, 18, 17, and six assists. Sean Smith adds 17 points in the first 8-10 win for the Hokes. Another day, another young baseball star traded so his team doesn't have to pay his salary. Will Cordero, 24-year-old power-hitting middle infielder, goes to the Red Sox from the Expos for not very much. Eligible for arbitration next month, Cordero had 10 homers, 47 extra base hits for the Expos last year. His third full season in the majors, he will probably play second base in Boston. He's been a shortstop in Montreal. The Red Sox give up only Ray Al Cormier, who was no more than their left-handed middle reliever, but whom the Expos have long coveted. He's a Canadian native. He'll be 29 next spring. They've had a lot of time to covet him. Sox also surrender first baseman Ryan McGuire, who hit 333 in double A last year, but is only six weeks younger than Will Cordero and has no power. Reliever Shane Bennett, who saved 24 games in double A, he's only six months younger than Cordero. And the Expos throw in lefty setup man Brian Eversgird, who can fill Cormier's spot in Boston. In short, Sox get Cordero virtually for nothing. Coming up, he's retired, unretired, retired again, gotten hurt, been declared out for the season. Now he may play in Sunday's NFC Championship game. We'll tell you who we're talking about in a moment. Also still ahead from Highlight City, it's pull the trigger now or stay in school for another year, and a bunch of football underclassmen have made their choice. The son's choice is it to give Uncle Chuck the big clip trade rumors and this sadly is not a rumor prominent skier prominently hurt these stories and more all ahead on sports center introducing the boston carvers the hot hand carved sandwich from boston market hearth honey ham or double sauced meatloaf boston carvers our famous chicken or rotisserie roasted turkey breast Stacked high on a French or honey wheat roll. New Boston Carver sandwiches from Boston Market. Carving out a better sandwich. It's color printing and it's state of the art. It's flyers. It's proposals. It's Crayola and Hallmark Connection software. And putting your very own logo on a t-shirt. So it's not business as usual. It's what you can do with a new Canon Color Bubble Jet Printer. Canon. What can you do? Put your hands in the air! They get more daring. What's the estimate? 12.2 million. We should take it down. With every score. This crew is good. But one cop. What do we got? Soon they got our phones, they got our houses, and soon they got us. Is closing in. Whatever score they're gonna take next, they're gonna have the surprise of a lifetime. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, Heat, rated R. Now playing. Sports Center is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. If you've just joined us, let's repeat the top story, and it will not be that much of a surprise to you, but tonight ESPN's Chris Mortensen is reporting, quoting sources close to the Fox Network, to Dallas Cowboys players, as close to their former coach, and other NFL sources that Jimmy Johnson has today accepted the offer from owner Wayne Huizenga to take over as the coach of the Miami Dolphins, that an announcement could come as early as Thursday that Johnson...